As twilight draped its velvet cloak over Taiwan, the night market burst into a symphony of colors, sounds, and aromas. Amidst this lively tapestry, Andrew's fish stall stood out, illuminated by the soft glow of hanging lanterns that swayed gently in the evening breeze. With a broad smile and an infectious energy, Andrew showcased his day's catch to the gathering crowd. His voice ringing clear, "Fresh fish caught this morning, the best in Taiwan, right here for your dinner." His hands, weathered from years at sea, deftly presented each fish, their scales glinting like jewels under the lantern light. Customers, drawn by the reputation of his stall, navigated the maze of the market to find him. A curious onlooker, intrigued by the display, queried about the salmon. How fresh is this? With a twinkle in his eye, Andrew responded, "Swim in this morning. It doesn't get fresher than this. Only three hundred NT for you." His assurance, coupled with a warm smile, sealed the deal as the customer handed over the notes, satisfied with the purchase. As the market's hustle began to ebb. Andrew found solace in the company of his old friend Ah Wong at a nearby food stall. Over bowls of steaming noodle soup, their laughter mingled with the remnants of the market's din. Ah Wong, with a mouthful of noodles, managed to ask, "Andrew, your fish is the talk of the market. What's your secret?" Andrew, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand, chuckled, "Early mornings and a good eye for quality, but I'm running low." Need to head out early tomorrow to restock. Their conversation, filled with shared stories and hearty laughter, continued into the night, a testament to the enduring spirit of the market and its people. The following day, Andrew embarked on his quest for the freshest catch at the break of dawn, traveling to the heart of Taiwan's coastal villages. His journey was fruitful as he skillfully selected the best fish. Engaging with local fishermen and basking in the camaraderie that came with years of mutual respect and shared toils. However, the day's success weighed heavily on him, both physically with his laden cooler and the fatigue that crept into his bones. Seeking respite, Andrew chose a secluded spot under a sprawling tree, its branches a canopy against the afternoon sun. He laid down the cooler by his side and let the tranquility of nature lull him into a brief slumber. This peace was shattered abruptly when two shadowy figures emerged from the underbrush, their eyes fixed greedily on Andrew's cooler. Without warning, they pounced, their sudden aggression catching Andrew off guard. He fought back with the desperation of a man defending his livelihood, but the thieves were ruthless. In a whirlwind of chaos, they overpowered him, snatching the cooler and leaving him bruised and battered on the forest floor. A stark contrast to the serene setting where he had sought rest. As the thieves disappeared into the thickening foliage, Andrew's cries for help went unanswered. The pain from his injuries was intense. A constant reminder of his vulnerability and the cruel twist of fate that had turned a day of hard-earned success into a nightmare. Lying injured on the forest path, Andrew's hope for assistance dwindled with the setting sun. The vibrant market, with its camaraderie and laughter, seemed a world away. In its stead, a profound isolation enveloped him. Punctuated only by the occasional passerby who, to his dismay, chose to ignore his plight, the first to pass was the village elder, a figure of authority and respect within the community. Andrew's heart leaped at the sight of him, certain that help had arrived. But the elder, upon noticing Andrew's battered form, hesitated only momentarily before continuing on his way, muttering about an important meeting. The rejection stung, leaving Andrew not just in physical pain but also in disbelief at the elder's indifference. Not long after, a seamstress known for her kind heart approached. Her gasp of shock upon seeing Andrew offered a glimmer of hope, but it was quickly extinguished. Though her eyes brimmed with sympathy, she excused herself, citing her inability to help and the urgency of her deliveries. 
As she hurried away, Andrew felt a deepening despair, the seamstress's retreating figure symbolizing the fading light of his hope. The forest path, once a place of rest and solitude, had become a stage for Andrew's abandonment. Each passerby who chose to look away, each excuse uttered, wove a tapestry of neglect that shrouded him in an overwhelming sense of vulnerability. The night crept in, bringing with it a chilling realization that he might be left to face the darkness alone. As nightfall embraced the path, a beacon of hope appeared in the form of a foreign traveler, his scooter's headlights cutting through the darkness. The traveler, an outsider to the community, displayed a humanity that Andrew had begun to think was lost. Dismounting with a sense of urgency, he approached Andrew, his concern evident in his voice. What happened here? Let's fix you up. With practiced hands, the traveler cleaned Andrew's wounds, his actions gentle yet efficient, a stark contrast to the harsh treatment Andrew had received from the thieves. His kindness, a simple yet profound gesture, was like a balm to Andrew's bruised spirit. As he wrapped the bandages, he offered words of comfort, a reminder that compassion still existed, even in the most unexpected places. Recognizing the severity of Andrew's injuries, the traveler knew that professional care was needed. He carefully helped Andrew onto his scooter, ensuring his comfort for the journey ahead. The ride to the clinic was a blur for Andrew, the pain of his injuries intermingling with a sense of gratitude for the stranger who had become his unexpected savior. Upon arrival at the small town clinic, the traveler's advocacy for Andrew's care was unwavering. He communicated with the clinic staff, ensuring that Andrew would receive the best possible treatment. His promise to cover any expenses was a testament to his selflessness, a rare quality that shone brightly in the dim clinic light. As the traveler prepared to leave, his parting words, You're in good hands now. I'll check on you tomorrow offered Andrew a comforting assurance that he was no longer alone in his ordeal. The clinic room was bathed in the soft light of dawn when Andrew awoke. The events of the previous day felt distant as if from another lifetime. The pain of his injuries was dulled by medication, but the memory of the traveler's kindness was vivid, a beacon that had guided him through the darkest night of his life. As he lay there, reflecting on the unexpected turn of events, Andrew's thoughts were filled with gratitude for the stranger who had come to his aid. The traveler's actions, driven by a simple yet profound sense of compassion, had restored Andrew's faith in humanity at a time when it had been shattered by betrayal and neglect. When the traveler returned, as promised, Andrew's thanks were heartfelt and profound. The words, thank you, you've saved my life, were more than mere courtesy. They were a recognition of the bond forged in adversity, a connection that transcended the ordinary. The traveler's humble acceptance of the thanks, his insistence that he had done nothing extraordinary, only added to the depth of his character in Andrew's eyes. As Andrew continued his recovery, the story of the Good Samaritan who had come to his rescue became a tale of hope and kindness that he would carry with him always. It was a reminder that even in the darkest moments, there are lights that shine, guiding us back to a place of warmth and humanity. The traveler, once a stranger, had become a symbol of that light, a Good Samaritan whose act of kindness would never be forgotten.